subscribe and click the like icon. Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger and this is my puppy, Hero. Do you also love jumping in puddles when it rains, Hero? <laughs> Let's see who can make the biggest splash. It's a frog! This frog sounds like a duck. And it has lines on its back. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Smile, Mr. Frog. Hi, Katie. Are you there? Hi, Leo. What an interesting looking frog. Can you find more information about it? Leave it to me. Great. I'm coming up. Hero, you stay here with our new friend. I'll be right back. Did you find anything? Hi, Leo. The frog you found is a common tree frog, but it's also known as a four-lined tree frog because some of these frogs have four long lines running down their backs, just like this one. The common tree frog lives in trees and spends most of its life hopping from branch to branch high in the treetops. I see. But how is the frog able to stay up in trees? The common tree frog has special sticky toes that help it hang onto branches and tree trunks. Like all frogs, common tree frogs are amphibians. Amphibians are animals that can live in water and on land. Common tree frogs spend the beginning of their lives in the water as tadpoles. Tadpoles are newborn baby frogs that hatch from eggs. When tadpoles grow into adults, they leave the water and live in trees. I see. So, what kind of food do common tree frogs eat? They eat insects and worms. They can be found in all kinds of places with water and trees in different countries in Southeast Asia. Hmm. I think we should return the tree frog to its natural home, where it can find a lot more trees and food. Come and join us. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! Ah, I see you've brought along a lively little friend with you today. What's it doing, Ranger Rocky? It's so noisy. Now that it's rainy season, the frog must be looking for a mate. Common tree frogs usually breed during the rainy season. The one you found must be a male frog. Male frogs gather around still water and wait on the leaves of plants. As they do this, they call out to the females to attract them. Once the male finds a mate, the frogs breed and the female lays her eggs above the water. The eggs are laid in special foam nests hung on leaves or twigs. During heavy rain, the tadpoles that hatch from the eggs are washed down into the water. That puddle looks too small for the frog to find a mate. If you want to find a better breeding ground for this tree frog, keep a lookout for a grassy place near still water. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Wait, is the frog still on my hat, Katie? Oh, no. He's missing again. He must be somewhere around here. Hmm. We can't find the frog with so much litter around. We should clean up the place first. Good idea, Katie. I bet the mudskippers will be happy too if the litter is gone. Let's clean up the place and look for the tree frog together. tree frog and we've cleared away the litter. Great work everyone! To find the tree frog's breeding ground, you have to look for leaves near a stream. Good luck! Is that the tree frog's breeding ground? The leaves are near the stream. This seems like a good place. Great work hero! We're coming over! Wow! There are so many of 
them. We did it! We found the tree frog's breeding ground. Great job, everyone! Hooray! Yay! We found a common tree frog in our garden. We learned that common tree frogs live in trees and that male common tree frogs gather around still water where they use their loud calls to attract females. So we went to the forest and found it a nice spot near a stream. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. Hero, I'm trying to get better at swimming, but it's not fun practicing alone. Why don't we swim together? You go first, Hero. Wow, you're a natural hero. Maybe I should try it your way. Ah! It's a crocodile. There's a small crocodile in the pool. Boy, that was scary. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. So if it's not a crocodile, what is it? Hi, Leo. The animal you found is a water monitor. There are different types of water monitors, and the one in our pool is a Malayan water monitor. I see. Still, it sure looks like a crocodile. It's easy to mistake water monitors for crocodiles, especially when they're in the water. But if you look closely, they're quite different. Water monitors have a shorter snout and a longer, thinner tail as compared to crocodiles. But, like crocodiles, water monitors are often found near water and are excellent swimmers. This is because the long, powerful tails of water monitors are used to propel them through the water. Wow! Maybe I should learn how to improve my swimming from a water monitor. <laughs> Don't get too close, though. Water monitors will defend themselves if they feel threatened. I see. So, what kind of food do water monitors eat? They eat small animals, fish, and birds. But if they want to, they can eat anything they can swallow. Yikes! I don't think the water monitor belongs here. What if it eats all the animals in our garden? Well, normally, Malayan water monitors don't live in gardens. They live in forests in different countries in South and Southeast Asia. The one you found comes from this place. Hmm. I think we should return the water monitor to its natural home in the forest. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. I'm sure the water monitor would be happy to go back home. See you downstairs. There are too many rocks on this bank for the water monitor to dig its home. Look, Leo. What about the bank on the other side? Hmm, that looks like a good place, Katie. There aren't as many rocks over there. Come on, everyone. Let's go over there. Here we go. is losing air. What's happening, Hero? Let me take a look. A large fishing hook pierced the float. We need to get the hook out and fix the float. Leave the fishing hook to me, Leo. Good luck, Katie. There. But we're losing a lot of air. If we don't fix the float, the Jeep will sink. We have to cover the hole. What can we use? <coughs> hmm. 
The water monitor covered the hole by sitting on it. Thanks, water monitor. Great. Let's head to the riverbank. We made it. Good work, water monitor. Goodbye, little friend. We did it. We found the water monitor's home. Great job, everyone. Yay! Yay! Today, we found a Malayan water monitor in our garden. We learned that water monitors live in forests where they build their homes near water. So we went to a riverbank in the forest and found its home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Look at this, Hero. It's a boat I made out of leaves. Now, time to test it out. Hmm, it looks kind of lonely. I know. I'll make a boat for you too, Hero. There, now we can have a boat race. We'll start blowing our boats on the count of three. Ready, Hero? One, two, three. Ah! Could it be some kind of snake? We must have disturbed it with our boat race. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Hi, Leo. The animal you found is an electric eel. An electric eel? Can it make electricity? It sure can. An electric eel is a kind of fish that uses electricity to stun its prey and defend itself from predators. The electric eel can produce electricity because it has special organs that allow it to store power, just like batteries. That's a really neat skill. What else does the electric eel use its electricity for? The electric eel has poor eyesight, so it uses electricity to sense its surroundings and find prey. The electric eel does this by releasing a low-level electric charge, which it uses like a radar. I see. What kind of food do electric eels eat? Electric eels eat sea creatures like fish, crabs, and shrimps. Some also eat small animals like frogs and birds. Electric eels live in South America, where they can be found in the Amazon and Orinoco rivers. Hmm, it's too dangerous for the fish in our pond to live with the electric eel. We should bring the electric eel back to its natural home. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. There. Whoa! Whoa! Ah, it's a river monster. That's not a river monster, Leo. That's an anaconda. Anacondas are the largest snakes in the world. They also have large appetites and prey on anything they can eat. It's wrapping itself around the float. The anaconda must think the jeep is food. No, Hero. The anaconda can swallow you whole. We could get the electric eel to help us. It can zap the anaconda and scare it away. Be careful, Katie. I have these rubber gloves to protect me from the eel's electricity. I have to make sure I don't touch the water with my skin. <laughs> the electric eel is too heavy. Let me help you, Katie. There it goes! 
The electric eel zapped the anaconda. Look, it's letting go of the float. Now, let's put the eel back in the tank and get out of here. We did it. We found the electric eel's home. Great job, everyone. Hooray! Yay! electric eel in our garden. We learned that electric eels produce electricity to stun prey and scare away predators. We also learned that electric eels live in the Amazon and Orinoco rivers. So we went to the Orinoco River and brought the electric eel back home. Good job, children. You did it. Hit subscribe and click the like icon.